Hello and welcome. It is that time of year again. Winter range stinks. Or does it? All right, let's talk about it. It's winter, it's cold, and if you drive an EV, you already know what that means. Range loss. Every single year, like clockwork, the complaints start rolling in. People are online freaking out about how much they're losing in the cold. My range dropped by 20%. I'm only getting this many miles of my usual range. You've probably seen it. You may have even posted about it yourself. And look, I get it. Nobody wants to feel like their brand new electric vehicle is underperforming. But is it really? As bad as people make it sound. Does it actually affect your daily driving or is it just a reason to vent online? Instead of talking about it, I decided to put it to the test. I ran a little experiment with my F-150 Lightning under four different conditions to see how much of a hit I'd actually take. Before I pop it up on screen and we dig into the results, I wanna just walk you through the different conditions that we looked at. The very first thing that we're gonna look at is what is the EPA range? Now, even though that's not an ideal benchmark, it seems to be the number one thing that I hear people compare, especially in the F-150 Lightning, to what they're actually seeing versus what the EPA told them they would get. Second, we're gonna look at what I'm calling ideal temps based on my performance. Mild weather, no extreme heat or cold, but what I actually see as my range and how my mixed use happens. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be different. This is not necessarily representative of what you might see. I do way more highway driving at higher speeds than I do around town. If you only drive around town, you will beat the EPA. If you only drive on the highway, you will underperform it substantially. I'd say I am 85 to 90% highway, so that's what these are based off. Of. The third, cold soaked, right? I left my truck out overnight in freezing temps. Then from there, the fourth, cold soaked, but I use the climate to warm up the cabin because there's a lot of back and forth on whether that actually warms the battery up to what degree does it, we'll take a look. And then the fifth and final condition that we looked at was using the departure times or battery precondition, warming the battery up before you drive while being plugged in. So let's jump over. Let's take a look at what I got going on here. So, as you can see, here are the five different areas. So if we talk about EPA rated range, I'm gonna walk you through the sheet first just to make sure you kind of see where we're at. The first 75%, I just wanna show, when I woke up to do this test, I was at 75%. So everything is gonna be based off of 75% and then I've extrapolated based on efficiency out to 100%. So let's just walk through this. EPA, 75%, I should be showing 240 miles of range and that's a miles per kilowatt hour efficiency of 2.44 little annoying sidebar this is all you see in the truck you don't get that second decimal place kind of annoying so based on 100 percent range 320 is where it is the ideal temps for my driving as i say i see realistically 2.25 miles per kilowatt hour right giving me that efficiency so on a full charge, I can expect 295 miles on 100 to zero, okay? So about 25 miles less than EPA, not a big deal, or 8% less than EPA. So now we're gonna just hide this because we're gonna base everything in this cold thing, not off how it does against EPA, but how it does based off of my normal driving for just the cold testing. So I woke up Saturday morning, my battery was at 75%. It was freezing. And I showed a stated range of 174 miles or 1.77 miles per kilowatt hour. That is a 21.3% drop. That would have cost me 63 miles. So right there, I said, all right, I'm not plugged in. I'm cold soaked. Let me turn the climate on and let me see how this works. So heating the cabin for 30 minutes, dropped my battery by 2%. 
you can see it looks like it's the same, but I'm just going to do the oh, wrong way. I'm going to do this. You can see it actually just decrease the efficiency even more. Not enough to really make a difference in terms of miles, but definitely did do it in terms of, you know, I lost those, those miles in that 2% of battery range, right? So it didn't make it any more efficient and it made it slightly less efficient because it was just sitting there warming up. The fifth and final thing that we're going to look at, or the third way that I kind of treated the, the truck in the morning commute was to wake up on Sunday, charge to 75%, leave the truck plugged in and hit some battery preconditioning, setting that departure time at 75%. I showed 185 miles of range or 1.88. So that's a 16.3% reduction. Instead of my ideal temps getting 295 miles, I actually was showing 247. And I have to be honest, based on my experience, I think that is a realistic with the battery treated correctly. That is the realistic way that uh, you would expect to see based on what I'm actually seeing. So pretty interesting, pretty interesting stuff here. I got to say the results were eye opening. Yes, there definitely is a range hit. You already knew that, but the part that nobody's talking about, how much does it really matter? Because here's the thing, even it, even losing that 20% of my range, guess what? I still don't need to charge. I still got through my daily drive just fine. And honestly, that's what matters most, right? When we think about the range. We, we're so focused on what that gasometer is saying. We're not thinking about how do I use this vehicle? Does the range that it provides me still achieve the results that I need for my use case? Right? So here's what I found. Depending on the conditions, I saw a range hit of anywhere from call it 15 to 20% rounding. Cold soaking the battery overnight with no preconditioning was obviously the worst case. But once I started preconditioning, the range loss wasn't nearly as dramatic. And here's my real main takeaway. Yes, you'll lose range in the winter. It's real. But here's the question you need to ask yourself. Does it actually matter? Because if your EV, the battery is big enough to give you, to get you through your daily drive without charging, who cares if you lost 20%? you're still getting where you need to go and you're still avoiding gas stations. So before you start panicking, ask yourself, does this really matter? Yes, it'll cost you efficiency. Yes, it'll cost you range. Yes, it'll cost you a little bit more money and electricity over the winter months, but, what it, but it's still gonna be less expensive in my case versus a gas F-150. So. We're kind of splitting hairs here. It does what it needs to do. Hopefully this provides a little bit of relief into the, yeah, the winter range loss is a thing. This stinks, but does it really matter? I'm going to argue it doesn't. This is my third winter with the truck. Okay. The first winter I had a little bit of anxiety around it. The second winter I kind of got used to it. And this winter I'm just, I know what I need to do with it. You know, I know it's going to, uh, it's going to, the gasometer is not going to look good, but I know where I'm going and I know kind of when that threshold is that I need to start making a plan to get from point A to point B. So appreciate this quick little video. Do me a favor. I'm just starting to dig into this a little bit more. So if you agree, if you disagree, let me know down below. If you found this valuable, do me a favor, hit the like. I'd appreciate the follow with the subscribe as I can start putting more of these things out. I look forward to hearing uh, what people may want to see me dig into more as this is now my third year living with a fully electric truck and my first time in an EV. Thanks a lot and we'll catch you next time.